Roger and Rex felt as if the scorpion beast men were endless, that there was no end to killing them. Blair was in the air and could see that more scorpions crawled out in the places lit by the moonlight. The situation was precarious enough, but a gush of black spring shot up from the sand, frightening Blair. Upon closer look, she realized that it wasn't spring, but more wild scorpions. There were so many of them that they piled together and resembled a spring. The densely packed, menacing black dots could kill someone with trypophobia. As the scorpions gushed out, a black scorpion of an even greater size revealed himself. Small scorpions were crawling all over his body like maggots. Blair recognized him right away. St. Jameson! Blair's countenance instantly turned pale as a ghost. Was he out to finish them all with this formation? Who? Who? Miles didn't understand. Although he also felt that the big scorpion was very strong, both Rex and Roger were four-striped beastmen, so there shouldn't be a need for them to be so terrified. In his little bird brain, he thought that only Blair could get easily scared, since she was a female. However, he noticed that Roger, who had the sharpest senses, had his hair all standing up. Even Rex was clearly keeping an eye over that direction, appearing extremely wary. Brock just might leave a slim chance of survival for Blair and the others, but Jameson wouldn't. He brought along even more scorpion beast men and wild scorpions, clearly not intending to leave them any chances of survival. Blair looked at the densely packed black dots on the sand and shouted loudly, Roger! Rex, run quickly! Don't get surrounded! If that were to happen, they wouldn't be able to escape, even if they wished to. Roger and Rex had their sentimental attachments and feared death. When they saw that the situation wasn't right, they immediately fled. Blair heaved a sigh of relief. Very soon, Lucius and Stephen were surrounded by the scorpion beastmen. She started to worry for them as well. How was the defense of this mystery guy? He must be a scorpion beast man, right? He should be like Steven, unafraid of being stung by wild scorpions, right? However, the wild scorpions weren't that important. The most dangerous one was the Alpha, Jameson. He was crawling toward them. Look out! Jameson is here! Lucius had his hands full with Stephen and didn't have the energy to pay attention to his surroundings. He only knew that many scorpion beastmen had arrived. He had no chance of fleeing, even if he wished to after hearing Blair's words. Stephen had completely lost his rationality. Jameson had lost his control even more. He raised his scorpion tail and charged into the battlefield, his huge scorpion pincer going for the snake's head. Stephen's eyes were busy with the enemy he was in a tussle with and didn't notice the danger from the other side. Just as his head and body were about to be separated, he suddenly disappeared into the air. Their battling speed was extremely fast and the lighting was dark. Blair had no idea how she had managed to see Stephen's dangerous situation clearly. By the time she reacted to things, she had already jumped off from Miles' back while carrying the child. Blair calmed down in midair, thinking of how she had acted out of impulse. Catherine was still howling away. Could the current Stephen be summoned by her? It was one thing for her to put herself in danger, but she shouldn't have jumped off together with Catherine. Blair was attempting to turn and place Catherine above her when she landed in an icy but gentle embrace. Looking up, Her eyes met a pair of eyes filled with deep adoration. Blair was elated. Her body then jerked strongly as she landed on the ground with Stephen's snake tail at the bottom. Thankfully, Miles hadn't flown too high. This height couldn't hurt Stephen. He immediately got up and asked how she was. Blair, are you okay? Blair circled her arms around Stephen's neck. When she saw Jameson charging over, she immediately pushed him away and said, Jameson is coming! 
Stephen raised his head and looked toward the sky. Miles immediately understood what he meant. He had taken his eyes off for a moment and thus failed to catch Blair and the child earlier. Now that he was prepared, he pulled Blair back into the sky at the very next second. Scorpions usually had a slow crawling speed. Even the stripeless beast Jameson's speed couldn't compare against a four-legged beast man of the lowest level. He raised his two pincers and crawled with his six legs, releasing rustling sounds as he instructed his tribesmen, Kill the eagle beast man! Instantly, even more scorpion beast men and wild scorpions surrounded Lucius. The sand was covered with a layer of black, and there was nowhere to land at all. From the top, it looked like a black hole that could engulf everything. Blair's heart wrenched up for him. She patted Miles's back and said, Go save him! Miles recognized that the other party was a flying-type beast man from one glance, a powerful one at that. His long and slender arms and muscular chest were proof of that. However, since Blair said that, he went ahead with it. The scorpion beast men weren't going to give them time. They were rapidly surrounding them. When Lucius saw Blair again, he was no longer the fearless killing god from the past. He had become one who cared for his life and knew when to flee. He became reserved. He had turned into his beast form a couple of times in the past few days and knew that there was no way he could survive while amidst a horde of scorpion beast men. He instinctively turned into his beast form and frantically flapped his wings to hover in the air. One of his wings flew normally, while the other kept on sliding downward unnaturally. One side of his body remained high while the other low, looking like a plane that was about to crash. However, he stubbornly rose bit by bit, the strong gales sent out by his wings sending countless small scorpions flying. Even the scorpion beast men found it difficult to move. Both Miles and Blair were stunned. Lucius looked over as if he sensed something. His body paused at an unnoticeable degree, but this had a fundamental impact on his flying state, and his body instantly fell. He then moved his wings instinctively in paralysis, feeling great despair. It's over. She must have recognized me. She must abhor me now and wishes for me to die. When Blair saw that the Black Eagle was about to fall into the seething sea of scorpions, she immediately woke up from her astonishment and shouted, Fly, you fool! Her expression looked so anxious as if she didn't wish for him to die. Lucia suddenly became energetic, and endless energy gushed into his body. He flapped his wings rapidly, flying faster than before, quickly breaking away from the danger. The three of them stayed in the air while Roger and Rex had run far away to watch. Right now, Stephen was the only one fighting against the scorpion beast man. The scorpion poison made Stephen even more aggressive. In addition to his life-and-death battle with someone strong earlier, the energy in Stephen's body surged by quite a bit. He was a rare talent to begin with. He could grow rapidly despite lacking arch enemies, let alone when he had just fought against an opponent who was stronger than him. The growth to his energy was a lot more than what he gained from slowly hunting prey for one year. In the duel against Jameson, it was still hard for him to get a chance to attack him, but it was now a lot easier for him to dodge. Jameson sensed that the snake beast man's battle prowess had risen slightly, but he only thought of this as a consequence of Stephen's ferocity being spiked by his poison. He didn't think much about it. After fighting for a while, scorpions once again crawled up to Rex and Roger, forcing them to watch from another location. Blair had Miles fly toward them. After discussing it with them, she came to a decision. Blair returned to the sky above where Stephen and Jameson were fighting, shouting, Stephen, stop fighting. His speed can't compare to yours. Let's head back to the village directly. As an unexpected occurrence of Blair's life being threatened had taken place, Stephen's mind was both chaotic yet extremely clear. He had to take Blair back to the village, 
Even if he couldn't kill this scorpion, he had to let Blair break away from him. Therefore, after a rapid dodge, Stephen turned and fled quickly. His tail was behind him, and the moment he turned, he dashed out several ten meters away. Jameson noticed his intention, but was unable to do anything. He could only give chase. At the same time, he used his tail to make rustling sounds on the sand, ordering all the scorpions nearby to prevent Stephen and the other two beast men from leaving. Stephen was like a sharp arrow, crushing all the scorpions on the ground with great ease as he cut through the air. His speed wasn't affected at all, and he was able to throw Jameson far behind him. Rex and Roger moved their limbs quickly, and the scorpions had no time to crawl up before being tossed far behind them. As the two of them had covered their legs with animal skin, they weren't afraid even if they were to step onto the scorpion stingers. Miles and Blair were left at the very back, only feeling assured after watching everyone leaving. They were about to leave when Blair looked toward Lucius, who was resting on top of a short tree, almost integrating into one with the shadows of the leaves. That bird figure seemed to hide even deeper into the leaves' shadows. If it wasn't because Blair had seen him earlier, she might not have been able to notice him. Blair hesitated for a short moment before putting on a solemn expression and saying in a soft voice, Quickly! That short tree shook intensely, and the leaves produced rustling sounds. Blair watched on strangely, then saw a black figure flying over unsteadily. She then understood. It must be the sounds he made when he was about to fly. Lucius's mind and even his body were all in a dazed state. When he heard Blair talking to him, he almost fell off the tree. Without even thinking, his body had flown out per her instructions. He was like a marionette, making various movements as if he were being controlled by strings. In about over an hour, Jameson had already been thrown out of sight behind them. However, he was still using infrasound that Blair was unable to hear to give out commands. It was late at night and the moons were full. The sand was illuminated brightly, and small scorpions could be seen attacking recklessly occasionally, looking like Stephen when he had been poisoned by scorpion venom. Catherine's crying finally stopped. Blair cradled her to sleep and started to feel sleepy again. Worried that she might drop Catherine if she were to fall asleep, she got Miles to land for a moment and then wrapped Miles with animal skin, making something like a sandbag for him to hold with his feet. She then climbed onto his back and slept in peace. Blair felt like she had only closed her eyes when she was woken up by the heat of the sun. She opened her eyes and saw that everyone was still rushing on their way. Stephen had turned his upper body into his human form and was carrying Catherine. He sharply noticed Blair's gaze and immediately raised his head, meeting her gaze and smiling gently. Blair said in elation, Stephen, have you recovered? Hmm. Stephen's voice wasn't loud, but it mysteriously reached her ears very clearly. His gentle voice was like a feather that was light as a snowflake lightly brushing against her ear canals. Blair's face heated up and she smiled shyly, then hid her head under the animal skin coat to avoid the sun. Thinking about it, it was a good thing that the scorpion beastmen had attacked Stephen when he was at his weakest. Otherwise, he'd still be fighting until he killed every last one of them.